And we're going to show you once you start keeping them, you got to continue to keep them. Because Jesus is not going to die no more. He didn't die for your past, present, and future sins like people say. He died for your past sins so you can start keeping his commandments because of that grace. Hebrews 10 and 26. Go ahead. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. So you can't break the law at will. If you sin willfully after knowing the truth, you don't have no more sacrifice coming. What you got coming? But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. See, he said you got trouble coming. Fiery indignation. That's what you got coming at judgment. If you just go against what you done started out on. So you got to complete this journey. Go ahead. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. See, they thought Moses was hard when he had people stoned, but Jesus is harder. Notice what he said here, verse 29. Of how much more, how much sore punishment suppose ye? So that means you're going to get a worse punishment than being put to death in the flesh. You're going to hit the lake of fire. That's sore than what Moses did to him. Moses put him to death under two or three witnesses. That was bad, wasn't it? But he said, of how much sore punishment suppose ye, go ahead, shall he be thought worthy, who done done what? Who have trodden underfoot the Son of God. Oh, so you knew about the Son of God. You got baptized in his name, but you didn't want to do nothing. You thought you didn't have to do nothing. So you just trampled over the Son of God. What it was, what his grace was intended for. You trampled over that. People say, well, I got grace and you can't lose the grace. You better take a second look. He said, who have tried underfoot the Son of God and did what? And have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing. See, you done forsaken the blood. The blood ain't going to help you because you didn't do it. I'm trying to show you just Jesus alone ain't going to make it for you. You got responsibility. He said, you have counted the blood of the covenant. You call the people call the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Well, do you got to keep his commandments? What are you talking about? They think it's all about the blood. Look, it's about Jesus and the law. He said he had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified. What did he count it as? An unholy thing. An unholy thing. What else did you do? And have done despite unto the spirit of grace. Oh, you done went back on the spirit of grace. See, grace won't keep you. Once you get grace, you got to keep it. By doing what you're supposed to do. Or else you can do despite until the spirit of grace. Let's go to Revelation and we're going to end it here. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. But this is the baptism of Jesus. All the New Testament is telling you that the law is not done away with. That if you're going to come to Jesus correctly, which is how you got to come or else you're going to end up in trouble. If you're going to come correctly, you got to keep his law. You need them both. Yeah, you can't say I'm going to keep his law and I don't need Jesus because you're already a sinner. So you're in trouble. So you need them both. Revelation 12 and verse 17. This is the last book in the Bible and he's going to keep telling us that we need them both. We, we got to have some works to go with our faith. Faith without works is dead. We got to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. Don't nobody want to do that. It's sad. But the Lord said the road to life is straight and narrow and few there be the finer, didn't he? But the road to destruction is broad and many on that road. So don't look at the crowd. I tell my kids all the time, you see where the crowd is going to be a few years from now. Think about that, then maybe you'll realize you don't need to be following them. 12 and 17. Go ahead. Revelation 12 and 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Oh, now you say, this is doing great tribulation. The Satan going to go back and deal with the remnant of the church. That's the woman's seed. He going to go back to make war against them. But how do you identify the church? How do you identify the people that's in the church? He said the remnant of her seed, which do what? Which keep the commandments of God. They still do that. They know that's what it's all about, brothers and sisters. And they have the testimony of Jesus. See, a lot of people want to say, oh, I got a testimony. Let me give you my testimony. I'm going to testify about Jesus. I got a testimony. But then the same people don't think they got to do nothing. 
But the Bible said the church, the remnant of the seed, the woman seed, they not only got a testimony, they keep the commandments of God. But now let's back up to Revelation, the 12th chapter, 14th chapter. Go forward to Revelation 14. Revelation 14, and we're going to read about the saints, which is one and the same. All these people who truly believe in the Lord, they know you got to not only believe in Jesus, you got to keep the law. That's what being baptized is about. You got to at least know that when you get baptized. Ain't about you just getting saved from your sins and you ain't got to worry about being obedient to God. No, you got to worry about it. You got to do it. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. See, it didn't say here are they that got faith in Jesus, did it? It said the same thing again. Now, this is the patience of the saints. Even against all odds, the saints going to do what they're supposed to do. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Because faith without works is dead. One more place, Revelation, the second chapter. Now, this is Jesus himself talking. The words are in red. And he tells you how long you got to do this. Because people say all the time, I sent a tape. We was going to get on this station in Detroit. I told you about this before. And this general manager of this station in Detroit, of course, she religious. It's a religious station. So she looked at the tape and she called me. She said, well, I don't know. It sounds like you trying to make salvation based on works. I said, I said, sister, whatever you whatever you heard, you read, you heard it out of the Bible because we read the Bible. Yeah, but see, we believe you don't have to do nothing for salvation. I said, well, you don't believe in the Bible. So we got going. I said, we ain't got. She said, well, just send me another. I said, no, nah, I ain't going to send you nothing. It's going to get worse than that. I sent you a nice one in the first place. So you, that's okay. Ain't no need for me to send you nothing else. But, I mean, how clear can you get? The whole Bible is telling you, you got to be obedient to the Lord. Now, this is what Jesus himself said. Because that's what people, that's what she said. Well, see, you trying to make it like it's based on works. Yeah, you trying to make it. I said, sister, we read the Bible on that show. Just like we reading it right now. And we're going to see if Jesus tried to make it based on works. Verse 26, Revelation 2 and 26. Uh, go ahead. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end. Oh, now Jesus is talking. He said, he that overcometh. You got to overcome, brothers and sisters. And you got to fight the fight to the end. So he said, and keepeth my works unto the end. So who trying to make it based on works? Me or Jesus? Sound like Jesus said it, didn't he? Keepeth my works unto the end. See, Faith without works is dead. Grace ain't going to do you no good if you don't keep the law. So getting baptized, you need both. You need Jesus and the law. Finish that verse. To him will I give power over the nation. If you do what you're supposed to do, the Lord going to bless you to no end. I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Israel, the Church of Jesus, invites you to contact us to further your understanding of God's word. We believe to properly worship God, we must have a thorough understanding of him through the Holy Bible. The prophet Isaiah told us to seek out the book of the Lord and read. And Jesus himself said, search the scriptures. Lastly, Paul told us to study to show ourselves approved unto God. We invite you to call now and join our mailing list to receive free Bible literature and a free audio tape message. You can also write to us at the above address and or visit our website, thykingdomcome7.com. Above all, we pray your knowledge of the Lord is increased more and more until thy kingdom come. So pay respect and bow before his throne.